Hello and welcome to lecture 9 of CS302 Data Structures. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about another type of linked list, which is circular linked list. And what is a circular linked list and what are the operations and how the operations will be performed on the circular link. What is a circular linked list? Let us see the first example. In this example, what we are seeing is, this is a single linked list where the last node contains a null pointer. So the null pointer indicates that we have reached the last node of the list. In case of a circular single linked list, what will happen instead of having a null pointer at the last node, there will be a pointer to the first node. So from here, it will be going back to this that means instead of this null pointer here, the address will be of the second node of the first node in the list and so the address will be 200. So this is a circular single linked list where the last node in the list contains the address of the first node instead of null. Similarly, if we look at this, this is a double linked list which we have already read in the last lecture. And what happens in this case also, the last node contains a null pointer in the next part. So this is the next part of the node. So this is the previous pointer and this is the next pointer of a node. And there is a null value for the next pointer in case of the last node. If we are thinking about a circular double linked list, then here, instead of the null value, there will be the address of the first node in the list, which is 200, which you can see. So we will be writing on 200 here. That means this is linked to the first node in the list. So this is why this is known as a circular list because it is we can start from the first node and we can come back to the first node after the last node has been visited. So in circular fashion, we can move like this throughout the list. Similarly, in case of a double linked list, we can move from the first node, go to the last node and come back to the first node with the help of the address stored in the next pointer of the last. Now, like in case of a single linked list, the movement direction is only forward. So in this case, we can only move forward. Well, so in case of a sing circular single linked list, we can only move in the forward direction. Well, in case of a double circular double linked list, we can either move in a forward direction or we can move in a backward direction. So this example is an ex this is this is a So this is a, it will be referred to as a circular single linked list. So this is a circular single linked list example. And this one is a circular So I will just write it down here. So this is a circular doubly. So if you have been asked a question, what is a circular linked list? You should not write only this. This should not be your answer. Specifically, if you are writing, then you should mention both the single linked list and the double linked list because the circular linked list can be both. Why? Because it's, there is only a change in the next pointer value of the last node, which contains the value of the first address of the first node in the list. Let us see the use of circular linked list in case of a computer system. So here I have marked you can see there are six applications which are running in my system. So 
we have a common CPU resource and that CPU resource has to be distributed among these six applications. Each of these six applications will be run in the system OS as processes. Now, how this process management is going to take place in the sense that how the CPU, a common single CPU resource will be allocated to the six applications and how they are going to run. In this case, what is done is the implementation of this task are done with the help of the circular link. So that this six tasks, they are maintained in terms of a link list. And each of this, so I will be having in total six nodes because I'm having in total six processes. So there will be six nodes here. Each of these six nodes will be the processes running and in case of the last node, what will happen? What is going to happen is that it is going to point to the first node again. What does it mean? So the first node, so the CPU will be allocating resource for a certain moment of time for the first process. Then it will go, so this is P1 process. P1 process means it, it, it is for the application one. Then P2 process like this, it will go to the P6 process. And after that, it will be coming back to P1 process. So this process keeps on repeating until and unless one of the applications here will end. So when one of the application here will end, that particular node will be deleted from the linked list. But this process will keep on continuing in the in form of um, in, in form of uh, uh, circular link list. Now here I have taken a double link list. It may not be a double link list. It may be a single link list because the movement of direction can be in only the forward direction. We may not go back to the backward direction. But if it is a kind of preemptive process, that means if some process comes with a higher priority, then we can also implement it in case in terms of a double circular double link. You can just imagine it something like this. So in a classroom, so we have a classroom of 10 students maybe. So there are 10 students sitting in this classroom. And a teacher is there who is given, who, who have to look after all the 10 students by distributing that time in an equal amount of time. So if my class is of 60 minutes, if the teacher's class is of 60 minutes, then each student can be given six minutes of time. Now what happens, so this can be implemented in terms of a single link. Now if some, maybe in this, a certain person comes who is of higher priority than the students. So let us think that to be our principal sir who comes into the room to talk to the teacher, then in this 60 minutes, if this process or if this student was getting processed by the teacher, he or she have to leave that student and first process this priority process. So this is how you can think of it. In this case, when a priority process comes, you may use a double link list or else it can be implemented as a single link. Let us see the insertion algorithm for the circular single link list. And here we want to insert a new node at the beginning of the list. So, like single link list insertion or double link list insertion, the first four steps will be same. That is, checking for the availability of a memory space. If it is null, that means it's overflow condition, no space is there we will end the program. Else, we will be allocating the available space to the new node and the available will be pointing to the next available memory space. And then new node arrow data will be assigned the value 30. So here I have already created the value. See, this is my new node, which is 30. And here I am trying to assign this node at the beginning of the list. It is not as simple as insertion at the beginning of a single link list. Why? Let us see. Because 
in the last node there we were having a null pointer but here for the last last node we are having the address of the first node so we need to assign 100 which is the address of this new node to this location so what we are going to do is that we are going to set up ptr that is pointer to the start node so so ptr is going to point to the first node Now we are going to continue it until we reach the last node. And what is the condition for checking that? So in case of the single link list, we were checking. So in case of the single link list, we were checking for the condition PTR add on next is equals to equals to null or not. So this was the checking in case of the single link list. But in case of a Circular sing list, we are not checking for the null, but we are checking for the start. So if we know that PTR arrow next is equals to start, that means this is the last node in the list. So we are here. So PTR arrow next means this part. Is it equals to the starting address 200? No. So PTR will be removed to the will be moving to the next node. So PTR now moves to this node. So this is PTR. Now, again, is PTR arrow next is equal to start? Yes, it is equal to start. So PTR will be stopping here. So PTR will be pointing to this particular node. Now, when it is pointing to this particular node, we come out and we see what we have to do. This will be the first node in the list. That means whatever is there in the start node will be put to the next part of this node. So if 200 is placed here, that means this will be pointing to 200. So we put 200 here. New node arrow next is equals to start. So 200 will be placed here. And this node will be pointing to this node. So both start, new node arrow next is pointing and also the last node is pointing to this node. So there are three pointers to this node right now. After we have done this, what we have to make, we have to put the address of this node at the next pointer of the last node. So what is this address? 100. So what we have to do? PTR arrow next. So PTR arrow next is this part. We have to put this address, so the address of the new node. So PTR arrow next is equals to new. So, this pointer is removed from here. So this is no longer there. This part is no longer there. What has happened now? So now, so this pointer is there. Now in this part, what we have written the address of the new node. So instead of 200, now it is 100. And this is pointing to basically this one. So this is the pointer to this one. Okay. So my this link is over. So this has become this node. This link is over. So it has become a circular. But now I have to put the address of this node to start. So what I write? Start equals to. So this is the algorithm for insertion at the beginning of a circular link list. So for a single link list, it is not that much simple as in case of a single link list because in case of a single link list, we were doing only a standalone constant time operation of setting these two pointers. But in this case, we have to reach the last node and we have to change the address in the next pointer of the last node. So that's why the complexity as we have seen for insertion and deletion in case of a link list is order of one because it's a constant time operation, only a few change of pointers, but it takes up also a search time. So it also takes up a searching time. So that searching time plus, that is a search time plus order of one. So this is the complexity of the insertion algorithm at the beginning of the circular link list.
Now let us see the insertion algorithm for a circular link list at the end of the list. So what we have to do here, first let us check. So this is my existing link list. This is my existing link list. Now here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert this node. And this will be the last node in the list. If this is the last node in the list, then this part, that is the next pointer of the new node, should contain the address of the start node. And the present last node the next pointer of the present now last node should contain the address of this new node. So basically in this part it will be 100 and in this part it will be 200. So how we can do it? Okay, I'm not talking about the input and output because that will be same for any insertion algorithm. And the first four steps will be same for any insertion algorithm. Now what we can do is that we can straight away, so if you remember in case of a single link list, we were writing new node arrow next equals to null in case of a single link list. Because in case of a single link list, the last node will always, the next pointer of the last node will always be null. But because we are talking about a circular list here, so it will not be null, but in case of a circular single link list, it will be star. Now what we are doing, we are setting a pointer to the start node. So start node, so PTR is pointing to here. Now we have to reach the last node here. Now for reaching the last node here, what we are doing? We are setting a pointer here and we are checking whether PTR arrow next is equals to start or not. So like in the case of the insertion at the beginning. So here, PTR arrow next is not equals to start. So PTR will move from here. So PTR will move from here and it will go to this part PTR. In this case, PTR arrow next is equals to start. Yes, 200. So we will start PTR here, come out. And what I told, we have to make the PTR arrow next equal to the equal to this node. That is, the PTR arrow next should be the contain the address of this new node. So what we do, we do PTR arrow next equals to new node. So this part instead of 200, it will become 100. So we see that this link is over. So this link is no more there. Instead, which link has been created? This link has been created and this link has already been created by this part. That is new node arrow next is equals to start. So here is the starting address. So this node has become connected to this node. So see, this is from here the node is starting and then this part contains the address of this node and this part contains the address of this starting node. So it became a circular single link. So if you see the insertion algorithm at the end for a circular link list, the only change which you have to make in that algorithm in case of a circular link list is that instead of writing new node arrow next equals to start, we have to write what, instead of writing null here, we have to write here start. So that this linking is over. So if you are thinking in point of view of a single link list, the insertion at the end is somewhat, is, is, is fully similar to uh, in case of a single link list, except this one line. Now, let us see the algorithm for deleting a node at the beginning of the list. So this is my list. And I have to delete the first node from this list. Now, if you remember about a single link list, it was very simple. The deletion was very simple. It was only a standalone, only a two pointer changes. But because in this case, if we delete this first node, so in this case, this is the first node and this is the last node. So again, like insertion at the beginning of the list, 
we have to make a change to the last node also if we delete or insert a, the first node in the list. So we have to make a change to this last node also. So again, as it is a common thing for any kind of uh, deletion algorithm, the first thing which you have to check is whether the list is empty or not. So null, if the, if the start pointer is pointing to a null value, that means the list is empty. So that's the underflow condition and it will come out of the list. If it is not so, then we are setting a pointer to the start node. So this is my PTR. So I'm setting a pointer to the start node. And again, I'm checking for the same thing, whether we have reached the last node or not. So how it is checking, whether PTR arrow next is equals to the start address. So it is not equals to the start address. So PTR will be equals to PTR arrow next. And if it is equal to the PTR arrow next, then we move to this node. Again, is PTR arrow next equals to start value address? No. So again, we move from this part and we go to the next node, which is this. And now if PTR arrow next is equals to the start address, yes. So we stop here. So this is my last node. So if I have reached the last node, what do I need to do? I need to make a change here. What I should do? Now PTR arrow next will be equals to start arrow next. That means this is my PTR arrow next. If I delete this node, then this node, so if I delete this node, this node will become the first node in the list. How can I get the address of this second node of the list? with the help of the next pointer of the first node. So this is my first node. The next pointer of this node will lead me to the second node in the list. So that's why what I am doing, PTR arrow next, so PTR is pointing to this node. PTR arrow next means this part. And this part will be overwritten with which value? Start arrow next, that is 400. So, Instead of a 200 here, it will become it will become 400 here. So this 400 means this link is no more there. This link has changed to this link. So this is the link which has been created. We can freeze chart. Freeze chart means we can delete this node. Now this step can come after this step. So these two steps can be interchanged. So step six and seven can be interchanged. Because we can first free and then we can make the start pointer point to this node that is PTR arrow next. Because PTR is pointing to this node because it has came back here. Now PTR arrow next contains a start address. So we can write start equals to PTR arrow next. So if start is equals to PTR arrow next means this pointer is no more there. So what we do? we go to this and we free this. So this part is deleted. So this is the algorithm for deleting the first node in a circular single linked list. Again, the order is order of one because deletion takes a constant time as we have seen previously. However, there is a searching time required to reach the last node. So that's a search time of order of n plus order of one. Now we never tell that the deletion algorithm will have a complexity of order of n because we are searching for the elements, but that search operation is order of n. But when we are deleting the any element from a linked list, we are neither shifting up or nor we are shifting down the list. So deletion and insertion in case of a linked list is always a constant time, which is order of one. Let us see the deletion algorithm in case of a circular linked list. If you want to delete the last node, 
in the list. So the first is always checking for whether I have reached the last uh, null condition or not. That means whether start is equals to null. So it's an overflow condition. If not, then we set a pointer to the start node because we have to reach the last node. So we set a pointer to the we set a pointer to the first node, PTR. And then we check whether we have reached the last node or not. And how we can check that? By checking the next pointer part of a node. So if it is equal to start, that means we have reached the last node. Now, here we are going to have two pointers, like in case of a deletion of a node, last node from a single linked list. So what it is, so PTR is going to point here. So it basically have to hold on to the previous node. So PTR is pointing here. And there is another pointer which is known as pre-PTR, which is also pointing to this node. If PTR error names is not equal to start, that means if it is not the last node, then pre-PTR will be equal to PTR, but PTR will be equal to PTR error next. That means PTR, pre-PTR will be pointing to this node. However, Pre-PTR will be pointing to this current node, but PTR will point to the next node. That means PTR is going to proceed, move forward, and pre-PTR is going to hold on to the last node. Again, we are going to check whether it is equal, PTR and next is equal to start or not. No, it is not equal to the start. So what will happen? Again, pre-PTR will be equal to PTR. So PPTR will point here and PTR will point to the next node. Now again PTR next is equal to start, yes. So we have reached the last node and we stop here. So PTR is holding on to the node which we want to delete and pre-PTR holds on to the nodes just before the last node. Now what change do we need to make here? In this case, because PTR is the last node and it will be deleted. So PPTR, so the node to which PPTR is pointing will become the last node with the essence that the next pointer part of that node have to store the address of the start node. So what we do, we make the pre-PTR arrow next equals to start. So PTR is pointing to this part and pre-PTR arrow next is becoming equals to start so this becomes 200 so this becomes 200 that means what is happening it is pointing to this node now and we delete this node so once we delete a node once we free a node that means all the arrows associated with it are lost so these linkages are open. No more linkages there. So now my node becomes this. So again, if you see, it is very similar to the single link list deletion of the last node. The only change is this part where we are going to look for not the null condition, but for the start address in the next pointer part of a given node. So this ends the lecture on circular linked list operations. I have not discussed the algorithms for insertion and deletion after a given node. I am giving that as an assignment to you, referring to the single linked list algorithms and here what we have discussed about the circular linked list about how to make the change in this checking condition. I am hopeful that you will be able to write that algorithm on your own. In case of any difficulty, you can contact me and then maybe in the next lecture, we will be discussing.